Well, one of our favorite guests is author John Miller, my friend. He's back with us today to talk about the concept revealed in his best-selling books, QBQ, which is Question Behind the Question, about personal responsibility, and the follow-up, which is called Flipping the Switch. Plus, he's going to give us an un inside look at his next project, which is going to hit the bookstores early next year. We'll learn a little bit about that as we go along, too. But always good to have John Thank Miller you. with us. John, good to have you, man. Always good to see you, Dave. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us, brother. Glad you. you're here. Well, uh, a lot of our audience knows the story. They yeah. know I picked up this book in uh, in Memphis, Tennessee yep. at the airport, read about half of it standing in the bookstore, finished it on the way home, called you immediately and said, we need yep. this book, we need to talk about this. Start talking with you on the radio about it years ago. Mm -hmm. But this book has become almost part of the Dave Ramsey uh, series, if you will, and it's a yeah. book we re have required reading inside of our organization. And it's all about just personal responsibility, which really with the mentality that's out there in our culture right now with a lot of trends, this idea of taking responsibility, as my dad used to say, you shot at Tarzan, you eat it. You know, these, these <laughs> kinds of things, right. you know, it's your problem to fix your problem. Uh, right. It's such a novel concept, that, that, and it's so foreign to, to what you see reported yeah. on the news, right. and, and on, on, you know, even on our own network here, it just it blows the mind. So talk about QBQ, sure. what, it is it, what is it for those that don't know? Yeah, right. Well, thanks for having me on again, Dave. Personal accountability is the core message behind QBQ. It all started back in uh, the 90s when I was selling leadership training to corporations, just calling on executives and, uh, and dealing with some high-level people every day and running training sessions and sat in these sessions I, and I, I heard all kinds of questions like, uh, why do we have to go through all this change and when is someone going to train me and, and uh, why can't I get more support around here and when will that department do their job right? And I sat back and I can still remember it. I sat in, in the back of many of these training rooms I thought, there's something wrong with these questions. And then I one day came up with this phrase, the question behind the question, and the market shortened it to the QBQ, because you know the market loves acronyms. So I went out and started teaching it, and people called it the QBQ, and I said, well, that's great. And I started teaching, let's turn those questions around. So instead of asking, you know, why do we have to go through all this change, let's ask how can I adapt. Instead of asking when will that department do their job right, let's ask, you know, how can I help them do their job, and what can I do today to be my very best. So I started teaching it, and it just kind of caught on, and it's all about personal accountability and taking ownership and responsibility, all the stuff you believe in, and how, how can you be debt-free? How can you live like nobody else so we can live like nobody else unless we take personal accountability? So there's a, as you know, there's a wonderful um, marriage between what you teach every day and what I teach in personal accountability and the, uh, the two books there, QBQ and Flipping the Switch. Absolutely. So talk about some of the market trends that you're seeing out there, because this book really addresses kind of three negative areas, victim mm, thinking, right. procrastination. Talk about those areas and then talk about what you're seeing in the trends of the market. Well, we're seeing a lot of the, one of the trends, of course, is entitlement thinking. And that's not new. That's been around for a long time. As human beings, we become entitled quite easily. You know, I'm, I'm self-employed. Sometimes I think a company should hire me just because I've called on them for three years. And that's entitlement thinking. I've got to earn the right to work with a client. But as I go out and teach this to mostly corporations, some churches now, nonprofit groups, you just, you hear it all the time, well, I deserve, I'm entitled, uh, people should bail me out, uh, I need to get more help. Instead of saying, well, wait a minute, I made choices. I mean, to think that sometimes the consumer makes choices and then blames the lender, it just blows my mind. You know, we, we talk about Wall Street greed. Well, what about consumer greed? I know that offends some people, but, uh, you know, when you got people making 50000 a year buying half-million-dollar homes and then finding out they can't pay the mortgage, then blaming the lender, there's something wrong with that picture. And I know you teach against this stuff every day, but when I go out and do my material on personal accountability and I say something like, what about the consumer choices? What can I do to own my choices? How can I stand on personal responsibility? At least in the heartland, we get some uh, really big applause to those comments. Now, I was out in Nebraska and everybody applauds because deep down inside, Everybody agrees personal accountability is still a great idea and it still works. But we're fighting some headwinds right now in terms of our society about entitlement thinking and bailing me out and all the stuff you talk about. But, you know, I'm going to stand on personal accountability and keep teaching it. And I do enjoy being a contrarian. You're a contrarian. It's fun, actually, to, to, to swim upstream and teach something that right now some people are saying, no, 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 we've got to go the other direction. And I'm still out here saying, no, personal accountability, it's the answer. Well, government is not the answer. That's right. Um, waiting on your Congress to fix your life, your president to fix your life, yeah. is not going to That's happen. Right. You got a long wait. <laughs> and, That's right. Uh, um, you know, if you wait on them to fix your retirement, you wait on mm -hmm. them to fix your health care. Here's a plan. Yeah. Go fix it. Yeah, go fix it. And, Take and, responsibility. You know, it's an old idea, and, and yet it's it is the it core. It is an old idea. You know, it's kind of 
one of the things I, I, I found with people when I'm dealing with them on money on this kind of an issue is there's kind of this moment that happens where people grow up. Yes. It is kind That's of right. a growing up thing. I'm going well, to take responsibility for me and mine and my future. It's kind of a grown up thing to say versus daddy, mommy, yeah. please take care of me. Whether it's the nanny state right. or whether it's actually, you know, mommy and daddy still taking care of me. That's right. I mean, That's at right. what point do you become a grown up? Part yeah. of that is you learn to delay pleasure. And part of that is you learn to take responsibility for your own actions. That's right. And, and, and for your actions, which are uh, born out of our choices. And so we have to decide, you know, every day, all day long, I have, I have the right to think. I have the right to choose. I can make better choices. I can make lousy choices. And what QBQ and Flipping the Switch are all about is they're really tools to help people make better choices. So when others drop the ball or things go against us or possibly we're having financial problems, uh, we can step back and say, wait a minute, how did I get here? Well, I didn't get here because of some external influence usually. It's usually, uh, if you look back, it's a series of choices that I made. And it's just really so exciting. It really is when people say, I own it. I got myself here. My decisions have directed me to my destination. Life is based on choice, not chance. Those are wonderful ways of living. And once we decide to live that way, there's really actually a lot less stress. I think there's a lot of stress in playing victim when I'm waiting for others to bail me out and save me. There's no power there. I have no personal power when I'm waiting for others asking, why is this happening to me? When I could be asking what we call the QBQ, the question behind the question. Hey, how can I move forward today? What can I do to make a difference? And, and it does happen at a different time in everybody's lives. Now, you'll meet 30-year-olds who haven't done this yet. You may 50, meet 50-year-olds oh, who haven't done this yet. it's not chronological maturity. Yeah. It's just emotional maturity to, it, to accept responsibility for your own life. It's something internal in different people it happens at different times when they just say, darn it, I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to play victim. I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm going to ask the question behind the question. How can I res accept responsibility today and move on with my life and, and be better tomorrow than I was today? And that's what QBQ is all about.